Hi friends, welcome to Raising Lifelong Learners. I'm your host, Colleen Kessler, and this is the podcast where I encourage you to trust yourself and your differently wired kiddos as you help cultivate their curiosity, encourage them to discover the world around them, embrace who they are wired to be, all while helping them discover their passions, interests, and raise them to become the amazing adults they're meant to be. Hey, 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 welcome back. This is episode 183, and this is a little bit of a different episode. For us around here, it is me kind of rambling at you. So we all have homeschooled out at times. We all hit the kind of winter slump and doldrums, and today was one of those days for me. I had set aside time to record this podcast, and I had a different plan for the podcast episode. But you know what? My day went off the rails And it reminded me of how often our days go off the rails and how often we feel as homeschool parents that we're the only ones who struggle. We're the only ones who have everything literally, as you'll hear about in this episode, blow up in our faces. And so I just talked to you about that. I'm hoping that this episode is encouraging. I'm hoping that it is uplifting. I am hoping that it helps you, that you put it aside, you keep it bookmarked so that anytime you're feeling discouraged and down, you can refer back to it and maybe listen to it again. It's not all that long. It is hopefully something that will lift you up and encourage you as you go into the slumpy kind of homeschool doldrum period that we all hit in early, early spring, late winter. So Before we get started, I just want to thank you, uh, send a special thank you and um, shout out to CTC Math, our sponsor. Check them out at ctcmath.com. You'll hear a little bit more about them later in the episode. Thank you, CTC, for all of your support. Okay, this is going to be a good one, I think. If not, it's going to be a real one. You'll hear about, you know, life in the Kessler household. Pop your earbuds in and enjoy this episode. Let's get on with it. Okay, so I like to keep it real, right? If you followed me for any number of months, any length of time, you know that I tell it like it is as best as I can while still trying to be encouraging because there's a thing about social media, right, where you go and it's the highlight reel. I know that there are friends of mine who I look at their Facebook profiles and I'm like, I know that their life isn't always like that, but it just seems like... They do so many great things as a family. They have so many wonderful adventures. Oh, look at that vacation that they went on. Look how happy their kids are together with them. Even while knowing that this particular child has a problem with this particular sibling or mom was just talking to me over coffee or a glass of wine a couple weeks ago about how this kid can't pass whatever class he's struggling with and is talking back a lot and she's at her wits end. I know this, right? I know this in my gut, but when we see other people's social media or their profiles or what they share, it's easy to think that they have it all together and we are just the only one struggling. So I try to share when things are going great, but also when things aren't or when we're struggling. And I think that I do a pretty decent job of of staying balanced with that, though it's hard. It's not like I can, anybody can really, go to Instagram or TikTok or Facebook or wherever and air all their family's dirty laundry. That's just not okay either because, number one, nobody's going to be inspired by you complaining all of the time. And number two, that's not fair to your family, right? You want to be uplifting. You want to be positive. You want to be your child's biggest cheerleader. But sometimes, you know, it's not always sunshine and roses and things go wrong. So I'm going to tell you about a day that I had recently because I think it's important to figure out, number one, how to bounce back from things not going right. But also, number two, to know that you're not the only one when things go wrong and that there are things you can do to pull yourself back. So we have, as you know, I host a podcast and I run a website 
that I've run for a long, long time. It started as a basic blog, gosh, way back in 2013 and maybe 2012, something like that, 10, 11, 12 years ago. And then it's grown to be a wonderful resource, I hope, to help you in your parenting and homeschooling and neurodiverse kids. And then I also run an online membership community. I write books because I love writing. It's been a passion of mine for a long, long time. I homeschool my children. I have a high schooler, a middle schooler, an elementary schooler. I have a college kiddo who is taking community college classes while working on his own business. And all of this stuff that goes along with parenting high schoolers, which if you have a high schooler, you know what I'm talking about, right? There's so much hurry up and wait in the high school years, driving here and there and everywhere, and then waiting in your car (laughs) until they're ready to be picked up or trying to run a couple errands or create errands to run so you can kill time until it's time for them to go home. And then those of you who don't have teenagers, let me just tell you, there's busy in every season. And so it's just a different kind of busy when you have teens. It gets overwhelming sometimes. And I know that we all feel this way. So our current situation, we're coming off of the holidays. It's been really busy. I'm working on a couple big projects, some of which I can tell you about. I'm going to be at the Great Homeschool Conventions coming up in the spring here of 2023. If you're listening to this when it's aired, let's see, we have um, St. Charles, Missouri and Greenville, South Carolina in March. Cincinnati, Ohio in April, Ontario, California in June, and Round Rock, Texas in July. I have a couple other smaller places that I'm doing uh, locally, and I have to work on my talks for those. I have to write them. I'm doing four brand new talks this year, and so that's a lot of work. I'm working on a book project I can't talk about yet, but stay tuned, and other things with regards to the community. We're moving it. At the time of this recording, we're moving it to a new platform. We're improving it. We're updating it. We're making it better than ever so we can really, really serve well the population of homeschooling moms who are homeschooling neurodiverse kids, and we can give them the resources, support, and feedback that they need. So there's a lot going on. And then I'm still homeschooling actively, three kids, and, you know, all of this stuff. Over the holidays, we had several illnesses. My husband had pneumonia. He had COVID at one point. My daughter had a viral infection, which led to bronchitis, which led to severe asthma attacks, which landed her in the hospital. And then all the rest of us just battled colds on top of all of the holiday stuff that you have. We got in, gosh, from late October through early January, we got in a complete and total rut of like not doing much and just doing the must-dos, like not doing anything extra, any homeschooling fun stuff or projects or activities. It was just, did you get your math done? Did you get your handwriting done? Did you get your language arts workbook done? Like that's it for right now. And that's not fun for anybody. It's a drag. It's a fight because it's just the drudgery. And so it it feels like, you know, it felt like we've been constantly on each other. So we're working towards improving that. And over the last couple of weeks, we've done, we've gotten in some really nice habits. And I was feeling, do you see where this is going? I was feeling super pumped and super positive about the handle I was getting on things. And that, you know, I knew that I was entering a season of overwhelm with work, but because we were in a good place with homeschooling, that it was going to be fine. And so We have some friends coming for the weekend to pick up some things that we were holding for them uh, while they were moving. And so they're coming, spending a couple nights, and then take their things back to their new house where they live out of state. And so I was, I spent all day the other day cleaning the house, cleaning everything, getting everything ready, and planning to work the next couple days to get all work off of my plate so that we could welcome them. So at the time of the recording of this episode, it is the day they're arriving. They are arriving later tonight. And I had all these plans to get some work done. I got a little bit of work done yesterday, but I was mostly getting the house ready for them. So I was going to have this big chunk of time 
to work today uh, because everything was done. I just had some dishes to do, put some dishes in the dishwasher, run the dishwasher, and touch up a couple of different things, and then everything would be ready for their arrival. And so I was working on the dishes today. And knowing, you know, in my head, I could get this done in about 15, 20 minutes, I could take a shower, and then I'd have three hours to record this podcast, preferably record a couple extras because I'm trying to batch and work ahead since I have a book deadline coming up, and maybe sit down and play with my kids for a little bit before everybody came. So as I'm thinking through this and listening to my audiobook and getting the dishes done, <laughs> there is this explosion of water and noodles. My garbage disposal backed up, blew up like the kind of thing you see in movies and television. In fact, my one friend who I I messaged about it as I was venting and whining said, I didn't think that actually happened outside of movies. uh, Let me assure you, it does happen. So it exploded all over. And because I was completely in a panic yelling for my 20-year-old to come help me, I didn't, it didn't register that part of the running water I was hearing was the sink was still on, the faucet was still on. So I had turned off the garbage disposal, but not the sink. So water's pouring. So the the garbage disposal exploded upwards. So there are noodles and water everywhere, like literally ceiling cabinets everywhere. And water's pouring out of the sink because the pressure disconnected the PVC pipes from the actual garbage disposal. So water's just pouring out that way as well. It looked like the the noodles that had been churned up and had backed up into the the under cabinet of the sink looked like little maggots crawling all over the inside of the cabinet. It was a disaster, a disaster. And so I'm panicking. My son comes and helps me. Cooler heads prevailed his, and he helped get everything mopped up. And by the time we got all of that done – Got everything wiped off. All the noodles wiped off. The water turned off temporarily in that area. The dishwasher stopped because I had started running it and talked with my husband about, you know, what had to happen. All of the work time that I thought I had had been eaten up. And so this podcast, which has taken a different turn, was not recorded. And so my husband, bless his heart, came home to fix the sink before all of the kids needed to be to their rehearsals tonight. They're, we've got some crossover. So kids are at rehearsals and, and our friends are coming. And I was going to take them to rehearsals, drop them off, come home, and be here for our friends. And then he was going to pick everybody up. So he came home early to fix the garbage disposal, help finish cleaning things up, and then take the children so I didn't have to leave and I could have this extra hour to record. And it was just – It was such a relief to have that. But as I'm thinking about all of this, we lost all of our homeschooling time today. We're not having any homeschooling time tomorrow because our friends are going to be here. I'm not ahead in the podcast where I wanted to be. So I'm going to need to work a little bit over the weekend and in the beginning of next week. And all of those plans that I had to like sit down and do things with the kids and get some things organized and get ahead have all literally blown up in my face. And while I was gifted this extra hour here to be able to record so I wasn't late on the podcast, I started feeling like, can I even do this? Is it even worth continuing to work and put out content and work on books and manage a community and work on my coaching calls and things like that. I I work full time while homeschooling and getting the kids to where they need to be and giving them the time they need and keeping a house. Is is all of this worth it? Am I messing them up? Should I just send them to school so they, they have focused time on classwork and aren't disrupted? Because let me tell you, Those two younger ones who were supposed to be doing independent stuff and I was going to help them out with some of it did not get much of their work done today. We really cut it actually because I needed their help keeping dogs away and taking sodden towels outside. And I think that that happens to us more often than we would care to admit. And it feels like it only happens to us. I can't tell you how many times I've been sitting around after something like this, maybe not as dramatic, 
has happened to derail all of us. Somebody's sick again. Some activity we were going to do is canceled. Something pops up, so we have to go to an appointment instead of staying at home and getting our work done. Comes up, and and I'm sitting there lamenting the fact that I'm just not getting anything done, and I'm scrolling through whatever it is. Instagram's my current scroll, and I'm seeing all of these people doing amazing unit studies or projects or field trips or outdoor time or whatever. And I'm thinking, I just can't do it. I can't be this. I, I'm not giving my kids what this mom's giving her kids or doing what that mom's doing with theirs. All they got done was a little bit of language arts, a little bit of writing, a little bit of math this week. And I'm a failure for it. Because I'm seeing all of those great things people are posting. I bet they're thinking about it too. And when I step back and I put myself in the shoes of other moms who are probably scrolling like I was at that time earlier today, I remember that it's a highlight reel. I remember that my Instagram is a highlight reel for the most part. And I can step back and I can be objective and I can remember what I would tell you if I were sitting down for coffee with you, that I'm the best parent for my kids. I'm the best teacher for my kids, that God doesn't make mistakes and I'm who they need and they're who I need. And we are the absolute perfect family in all of our imperfections, right? We have lots of those imperfections. We struggle with anxiety. We struggle with perfectionism. We struggle with impulsivity, depression. We have lots and lots of attention challenges. We have extreme hyper-focus and perseveration on things that we're interested in and a complete and total lack of motivation for the things that we're not interested in. Oftentimes, our house is a disaster area. Because none of us want to do anything. So things build up and build up and build up. And we've got sinks and counters full of stuff. And then we have to take everything else off of our plate to catch up. And I remember that if I were talking to myself, I would tell myself to give myself a break. And that even with all of that, I'm still the best parent and teacher for my kids. Hey there. Okay, I want to take a quick minute and talk to you about CTC Math. So CTC Math, our sponsor for this season, is the math program that we have chosen to use for our own kids this year. And actually, we've been using it for the last couple years. And one of the reasons we switched math programs over to CTC Math exclusively is because it allows extreme flexibility. I love, love, love all of the openness that it offers to us as a family of differently wired kids. We've got kids in our family who have just taken off in math super quickly and have always had an aptitude for it. And we've had kids in our family who have not been really strong math kids. And the CTC math program is set up in a way that allows for us to meet the needs of each of those individual kids without buying a bunch of different programs or levels. I love that when you subscribe to CTC Math, you get access to K-12 to math levels. You have the ability to skip around. You can move forward or move back as often as you want. And parents have really great controls and get good reports. So I love that I can go in and I can set my expectations for my kids. So my kiddo who's super strong in math right now, I can set it so that in order for him to move on to the next lesson, he needs to get a 90% or higher because his biggest failing in math is speeding through it and making careless mistakes. So I want to make sure he slows down and he takes his time because when he does slow down and take his time, he gets the answers correct, usually on his first time through. But for my kiddos who struggle a little bit with math, I want to make sure that they're feeling empowered and they're feeling successful. So I'm able to set their expectation closer to 80 or 85%. That way they're more able to be successful the first time through a new math concept than they would if I set it to 90 or 95%. It gives you the opportunity to customize it for your kids in the way that works best for them individually and not just as a whole. The other thing I like is the weekly reports that I get. Get an email every single week that lets 
lets me know how many times my kids logged on, how many lessons they completed, what their percentage was overall, and a general idea of how they're doing. And then I can click through if I want and I can get a better breakdown of the exact areas in which they had issues or the areas in which they were super successful so I can adjust if I need to or I can meet with them to make sure that they're understanding concepts. Such a flexible program with so many great little pieces to it that I just love recommending it to anybody who's looking for a math program that's flexible enough to work with all different types of kids and is affordable and user-friendly. So check them out at ctcmath.com. Let them know that we sent you from the Raising Lifelong Learners podcast. And let's get back to the episode. And so I wanted to share today that kind of reflection and reminder that as we are moving into February, And all of the letdown from the holiday season and all of the doubts of, all of the letdown, right, is happening. And all of the doubts are creeping in of the, am I doing enough? Am I doing enough? I'm I'm reaching the second part of the second half of the year and I only have through spring to get my kids through whatever grades they're in right now. And am I doing enough? Are they getting what they need from me? They're getting what they need from you. Trust that. The process of homeschooling works. I am so fortunate to have the job that I have, to be able to go to conventions and conferences and talk to homeschool moms all over the country and, in fact, the world. I've done many international online events, but I've also done some in-person events in Canada. And so I've talked to parents all over and Everyone who's graduated a kid says the same thing. Homeschooling works. It doesn't matter what curriculum you use, whether you use curriculum or not, what style of homeschooler you are. If you can't define your style, if you can, whatever box you've chosen to put yourself in or whether you've chosen to issue boxes altogether, homeschooling works and it works because you're home with your kids, whether you're actually physically in your home or you're running around to all different rehearsals and classes and co-ops and projects and hikes and everything else, whether you're actually physically at home or not, you're at home. You're with your people. And being with your people, the people you love more than anything, the people that nobody else can love as much as you love, the people whose needs you have first and foremost in your mind and whose welfare is always something that you're thinking about, just by virtue of the fact that you're with those people and you're doing life with those people and you're learning alongside of those people, you've already succeeded in making them into the best versions of themselves. And so, yeah, you might have a garbage disposal explode in your face. You might have a kid who's not motivated to do any of their schoolwork and only wants to sit on screens all day. You might have kids who have a career or talent or passion path that you know nothing about and you feel overwhelmed like you're never going to be able to help them get to and what they need because you don't even know where to begin you're still the best person for them because you love them more than anybody and you'll do whatever it takes to find out the information or help them learn how to find out the information. So as we're entering that kind of doldrums part of homeschooling, right? The People call it the January slump, the February slump, the March slump, the spring slump, the winter slump, whatever it is. Sometimes it hits me in February. Sometimes it hits me in January as I'm making my New Year's resolutions for the year. Sometimes it hits me in March or April when I'm on the road for conventions and I'm like, I am not even home to homeschool my kids. What am I doing? Whenever it hits you, it's something is going to hit you around this time of year because you care. But... Because you care so much that this uncertainty and doubt is hitting you, you're going to be successful. 
One of the things I say to parents in my talks often, and so if you've been to one of my talks in person, you've heard this before, possibly. I don't say it in every talk, but I say it often enough that it's kind of become one of the things I say. You're here in your spare time listening to a podcast about homeschooling your quirky, differently wired, neurodiverse, interesting, creative, outside the box kind of kid, right? Instead of listening to an audiobook and popping bonbons, instead of chatting with your sister about whatever she's doing, instead of going out with a friend for a glass of wine, instead of putting your feet up in a bubble bath and reading a fluffy romance novel or whatever, you're listening to a homeschooling podcast. You're learning more about you and your child. You're looking for more resources to help you be a better homeschool parent. Just like those people who come to conventions and sit in there and talk and listen and ask questions and peruse curriculum and go from talk to talk to talk to talk. They're they're spending, you're spending money to go on a romantic weekend with your spouse to a homeschooling convention or a a girl's weekend with your friends from co-op to a homeschool convention. You're listening to a homeschool podcast. You're reading books about parenting and homeschooling. You're doing all of those things that guarantee your success. You're already successful because of the fact that you care enough to be there for your kids all the time. So during this kind of slumpy time, when you're hit with the doubt When you're scrolling, even if you're scrolling my Instagram, and you feel inadequate because you feel like everybody else has it together and you don't and you're the only one, remember this. Listen to this again. Picture noodles that look like little maggots flying all over my kitchen and myself and me and my cabinets and my dogs are still in there licking the cabinets that I've cleaned three times because obviously noodles leave remnants that dogs can sense. Picture the fact that even the homeschool mom down the street or next door or at co-op who you think has it all together or those that you see on Instagram that you think have it all together have days or weeks or months or times like this. And we all feel the same doubt and the same insecurity and the same overwhelm at times. And believe in yourself. Believe that you're the best homeschool parent for your kid. Believe that you're the best mom for your kid. Seek out the resources that you need. Ask the questions that you need and know that there are people there to encourage you and to build you back up. And frankly, if you need a pep talk, DM me on Instagram. Send me a message. Let me know that you're doubting and you're in that slump. And if I can't answer what question you have exactly, I'll still shoot you a message and say, dude, you're doing a great job. (laughs) You've got this. Because your kids are yours and you're not going to mess them up no matter what. Sure, all kids and parents have trouble together and with each other at some point, but just by building the relationships, keeping your connections strong, talking to each other, showing that you are fallible and you can cause big problems because the backup was completely my problem, my fault with the uh, garbage disposal, which my husband was very happy to point out. (laughs) Let your kids see that. We all make mistakes. We all get discouraged. We all get down. When you're feeling super down, I want you to step back. I want you to reach out to people who can build you up and encourage you I want you to step away from the things that cause you doubt, and I want you to refocus your attention for at least a time on the fun things you can do with your kids. Pair it back to the must-dos, and then give them something and do something with them that brings all of you joy. Right now, my kids, instead of going to the things that we had planned to do, I uh, had them do one math lesson, a page in their handwriting and a page in their language arts and they are now playing happily the Wii that we got for we got a refurbished Wii for Christmas. One of the reasons was I thought we had all of our old stuff for it. Our old controllers and all of our old games that my big kids loved when they were younger. 
but we can't find that box anywhere. <laughs> so if anybody has any old Wii games they want to get rid of, let me know. But they're happily playing uh, Wii Sports Resort right now and loving it. And so we're going to take some time over the next couple of days. We're going to enjoy our house guests. We're going to play Wii. We're going to have some fun together. And then we're going to retry starting next week. Give ourselves a fresh start. Remember that in the gray days of winter and early spring, doubt's going to come in a lot more than it does in the bright sunshine of spring and fall and summer. And that's okay. We've got this. We are homeschooling our kids. We are with them and we are doing things that we know are best for our kids and we should trust ourselves. So if you don't take anything else away from this episode, this Colleen is being real and letting you know she exploded a garbage disposal in her kitchen and feels down and like she's inadequate too episode. I want you to take away that I'm in your corner. I believe in you. I'm right there with you. You're not alone. Every single homeschool mom you watch on social media, on video, on YouTube, TikTok, on Instagram, on Facebook, on their blogs, listen to on their podcasts, every one of them has days or weeks or months or seasons where they doubt, they feel insecure, they feel inadequate, and they worry and mess up. So you're not alone at all. And we're all right there with you. And you have completely got this. You are the absolute best parent for your child. You are the absolute best teacher for your child. Don't let anybody take that confidence away from you. I am so incredibly proud of you that you're doing this hard thing and you're doing it day in and day out. And your kids are going to thrive. They're going to be amazing, incredible adults who have a strong foundation to build off of. And that's all because you pushed through the hard and enjoyed the pleasures of the easier and the better and the smoother times. I'm so proud of you, homeschool mom. I am so incredibly proud of you. All right. Next week, we have a great episode lined up. I can't wait to share that with you. And we'll be back, same time, same place. If you get a chance and you know somebody who could benefit from this episode, please feel free to forward it on to them. Encourage them to subscribe. Leave a rating or review if you're up for it. It really helps get noticed in search and in the algorithm. Regardless, I'm so grateful for you. You can find resources to help build you up and remind you how great you are and how well you can do this over on the show notes for this episode at raisinglifelonglearners.com forward slash podcast. Special thank you as always to our season long sponsor, CTC Math. We're so grateful to them and their support. Check them out if you haven't had a chance to yet, ctcmath.com. And I will be back. I'll talk to you soon. Have a great week. Bye for now.